Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. This is my orchid collection, which is housed in a grow tent that I built in my apartment. And today I'm going to update you on what's going on with my mostly Cattleya collection with a few other odds and ends. First thing, I took my Vanda Falcata to judging on Saturday and the judges really liked the flowers. I was I was just kind of taking it just I don't know why not right I enjoy going to judging I enjoy hearing the judges talk about why a flower is or or not awardable so they said that the the, the shape and the color and everything was definitely award quality it was just a question of the number of flowers per spike so the average for awarded Van de Falcatas is seven flowers per spike. And mine are, I think, one has five, one has four, and one has three. So they said if I could get the flower count up, it would be awardable. And that was super cool. I've, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, AOS awards and AOS standards. My view of it has definitely changed over the years. Um, and where I am right now is... Um, an AOS award is has nothing to do with beauty. It is not how beautiful a plant is. It is not them telling you how beautiful your plant is. It is a question of how does this plant measure up against a standard that has been decided upon by the American Orchid Society. Okay. Well, the American Orchid Society, I feel like, they can come up with whatever standard they want. I trust that whatever standard they come up with makes sense. And they've been around for a hundred years. If they need to change their standards, I suppose they could. I've heard that that's practically impossible. But, but so the first thing you have to do to kind of get on board with the AOS, award, AOS awards is just uh, accept the standard. Accept that they have a standard. Okay. Next thing you got to do is you have to understand that the award is often, and, and you know, there were there have been other flower societies. There was a chrysanthemum society, orchid, uh, iris society. Um, there are other flower societies as well. A lot of them are kind of defunct now. But the way I understand it is, it was more or less something for breeders and nurserymen, nursery people to work. Towards. So by, by, by breeding a plant that conforms to or even exceeds AOS standards, you're kind of proving your breeding abilities. So if I bring a plant in, like for example, you guys know Cattleya rex is my, is my jam. If I'm able to breed Cattleya rexes that exceed the AOS standards for Cattleyas, it has nothing to do with this is beautiful or not. It shows that that breeder knew what they were doing and was able to create this plant with this flower that exceeds that AOS standard. So it's, it's kind of, I think it's, the way I understand, the way I look at it is it's about the grower, it's about the breeder. Flower Quality Awards are about breeders breeding excellent quality flowers and showing their ability to do that right now you know for example i when i had my um, first rex judged they said you know this dorsal sepal is too far back okay and i i had you know a lot of people and my even myself thinking well you know this is a species that's how it that's how it is right how, who are you to say that this is not a it I think that that's taking it the wrong direction. It's just a question of this is this is our standard. Can you bring in a flower that meets that standard? If so, or meets or exceeds that standard, if so, we're going to give you an award because you are showing that either you had the skills to breed this and make this happen or you managed to find a plant out of a whole bunch that that had those qualities. That's and that's pretty much it, you know? Um so I, 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 I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I, 
I understand that some of some flowers will never meet that AOS standard and thus will never be awarded. Now, you could still get an AOS award for culture even if the flowers are not up to standard. And I think that that's for me that's hard to argue with, you know. If you bring in a if you bring in a plant with more flowers than any other plant had ever been brought in with, you know, or just a bigger, more floriferous, healthy plant. Um, I, I think you deserve an award for that. And, I, and the AOS is, a, you know, there. I think it's going to be a lot harder to argue with their standards on awardable culture versus awardable flower quality. So, um, you know, this this plant here... This Cattleya Rex, uh, I am not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be shy. I'm, I'm aiming for a cultural award with this thing. I mean, I'm looking for flawless leaves. I'm looking for badass root growth. I'm looking for a plant that is super happy, right? And then you get a few more bulbs on this thing. The trick to getting that cultural award is can you get this plant with multiple spikes all in bloom at the same time and the bloom's in good condition. That's the, that is tricky. You don't have a whole lot of control over that. At least I don't know how to. But if I could get this plant next year to put out three or four more bulbs and each one of those bulbs have uh, bloom spikes in bloom on time for judging, those all those things have to happen, this could be a cultural award. And, you know, cultural awards... That's all about you. That's all about you, the grower. That plant cannot get to that state unless you know what you're doing. So, uh, again, I, I've i gotten a few messages from people that were a little skeptical of AOS awards, and I understand. I definitely, definitely understand. But it's something to work. It's something to work toward. The cultural awards especially, like... Cultural awards are, are something I think everyone should strive for. All right, what happened this week? Something interesting. Um, a friend of mine runs a ceramics business called Squidfired Ceramics. You can find him on Instagram. And he sent me these little, kind of little, little bowls. And I'm going to put, I have put, my uh, some of my Dawiana seedlings in those little bowls. They've got kind of ceramic uh, marbles sitting on top to kind of give the plant something to kind of push down on it. And we're just going to kind of see. These were the plants that had a little bit of thrip issue last week. And uh, I'm hoping that the lack of medium, the air exposure, possibly discouraged thrips. I uh, just kind of disrupt their little life cycle, but um, I did spray the entire collection. I soaked everything with imidacloprid. I'm going to do the same thing today or tomorrow, and I'm going to spray one more time, and then I'm going to evaluate. I have not seen any. I found a few dead ones, but um, I'm going to do one round and then see where we're at. Catlirex Inti, you can see it's on its way out. The flower stems are changing to a yellow color. This one was pollinated with pollen from Mayu. Mayu is a awarded clone. And that award should be should be published within the next couple weeks. So if you're on or Orchid Pro or you have Orchids magazine, you hopefully will be able to see Mayu Mayu's photograph uh, in the next next few issues or so. So I'm really, really, really excited about that. Uh, we got more Rexes on the way. In fact, there are nine Rex sheaths with buds in them right now. I'm super excited. So Mayu is going to produce another bunch of flowers here. Um, on this side, we've got Il Iliapu. Iliapu means lightning. So this is Iliapu. has got two. This is a first bloom. Kilia is moon in the Quechua language, the language of the Incas. And Kilia is opening up, opening up now. This one was a surprise. This plant did not have any roots, but I do see buds in the bottom of that sheath. So we are going to get 
flowers on this one. Uh, this one is rainbow in Quechua. It's uh, Kuichi. Back here we've got Nina. Nina means fire in Quechua. First bloom on Nina. And then Urku. Urku is mountain in Quechua. And those guys, two sheaths, will be pushing out blooms in the next few weeks. And then to make things even more fun, we've got Cattleya Maxima back here. This is the Corulia form. Two nice sheaths, and they have buds pushing up inside of them as well. So August looks to be promising. Late July and August, early August looks to be promising with lots of Cattleya blooms. Another development is that uh, Hal went ahead and decided it, it, that he's going to put out one more flower on this spike. And then look down here, look what Hal's doing. That is a new spike on Hal. I know that it's a spike and not a growth because Hal, it is long. Growths tend to be wide, spikes tend to be long. When it first pokes out, it's just about impossible to tell. But at this point, I can tell it's long and Hal is spiking again. I'm a little bit I want Hal to produce leaves. I want him to produce new growths. He hasn't produced growths in well over a year. I'm not quite sure why, but it is what it is. Hal spiking again, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, Hal. Uh, so, yeah, it's funny. Like, the seedlings, it's the seedlings are slowly, as they grow larger, they're going to slowly just start taking over the place. Got lots of nice new growth on these seedlings. Lots of Cattleya seedlings. Got new pots. These are the Periflora Cattleya Rex seedlings. I kind of bunched them in little pots. Hopefully they're going to do well. Um, still got these in a wooden pot and then I have a bunch of them over here that I still have in a clay pot. And when I removed the other ones from a clay pot, they were in a similar situation. They were stuck to the pot, which is good. That means those roots are grabbing hold. Uh, if we look past Kelia, Cattleya Rex, we can see Cattleya Walkeriana uh, here. New leaf here, new leaf down here as well. And I really hope this plant is able to bloom this winter. Really, really hope so. It's a really nice plant, grows really well. The red spots make me think that it is getting enough light. Um, so, hopefully we'll be okay. Kelly Gaskeliana was kind of in a bad state, but it has, it's well on the road to recovery. We've got new leaves, we've got new roots, and hopefully we're gonna be just fine, just fine on that. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, our catacetums. So, Mormodia Jumbo World has really taken off. I'm going to have to back out here. Really taken off. This plant's uh, potted in sphagnum. I've never tried the PET method, but sphagnum works fine for me. This guy's coming up really nice. This is Rebecca Northern. Or Northern, I'm not sure it's a voiced TH or not. This is Mom, uh, Signodi's Wine Delight. Doing okay. And then this is my uh, little coop. This is Signochi's Coopery. You can tell these things are really sensitive to water. Gonna watch, gonna have to watch out for this guy. And then just one more thing I wanted to show you the uh, Phalaenopsis down here. Massive plant, lots of buds, and hopefully we're gonna enjoy, oops, roots, enjoy those buds opening up, and then uh, I'm gonna do my best to get it out of the tent without destroying the spike. And if that means having to take everything out, I might just do that. Because last time I tried to get it out, I broke the spike off. Oops, don't want to do that again. This is a really nice grocery store fowl. 
and the flowers last for four months even in my really dry apartment. So I love that. I like this plant. Nothing like a big, beautiful, fluffy white fowl, right? All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. Have a great week. Bye.